Okay, so in the last few years, there's obviously been a lot of attention on the Nintendo Mini consoles, the Mini NES and the Mini SNES. Partly because these machines were part of people's childhoods and they wanted to recapture them. And then there's been all the limited number issues, shall we say. They're not the only people to jump into the market. There's obviously been the At Games and Blaze small Mega Drives that have had built-in games and then extra games on cartridge. And unlike the Nintendo ones, they actually had cartridge slots so you could play your original games. Although, unlike the Nintendo ones, they also had a lot of problems. Poor sound, less than stellar emulation, and some compatibility issues in general. We've had a, I think, at least two Mini Spectrums, a Mini Commodore 64, and now we're about to get a Mini Neo Geo. For those who don't know what the Neo Geo is, well, originally the Neo Geo launched as what was called the MVS, the multi-video system, a coin-operated arcade machine, and basically it allowed the arcade owners to have a cabinet and which had a main board and then you slotted cartridges into it. Depending on which main board you'd brought, this could have room for one cartridge, two cartridge, four cartridge. I think there was even six cartridge ones. And you also had panels where you could pull the art out and put game specific art in. It was sort of an easy way for arcade owners to quickly change games. The Neo Geo wasn't the only version, but this was SNK's version. Capcom had their CPS 1 and 2 boards. And then there was a home console version made called the AES, which was originally launched as a rental console for video game stores in Japan, called the Neo Geo Rental System. And they didn't, I think at first, really intend to release it for home use. This was later reversed due to high demand, and it became a sort of a luxury console. It was a luxury because, unlike the Mega Drive and the SNES, where often you were playing cut-down arcade games, the AES had the same raw specs as an arcade machine. And so, once you put those games in the correct shell and board configurement for the home version, you could play an arcade-perfect version that would be, you know, indistinguishable from the one you'd find out in arcades. This isn't the first time that we're going to get a sort of new Neo Geo. I, I struggle to call it a mini because it was big, but there was the Neo Geo X, which was a handheld console, but then it slotted into a case that made it look like a real Neo Geo. But apparently there was a lot of issues with that to the extent that the people SNK had got to make the system. They asked them to stop making it, basically because it was sullying their good name, so to speak. But now we have this new system coming up. So, the Neo Geo Mini had previously been hinted at, but now it's official. It's based on the Neo Geo MVS arcade machine, and it will come in two versions, a Japanese one for Asia and an international version for North America, Europe and beyond. It looks like the machines pretty much are the same, they just have a slightly different finish. They feature... They feature a 3.5 inch LCD screen and apparently this mini console comes preloaded with 40 games. It has a HDMI port for those who want to see it on a bigger screen, a headphone jack and two external controller ports. Apparently the controllers will be available in black and white if the leaks are believed to be true as I don't think official pictures have launched yet. But the ones that have been shown look very much like the Neo Geo CD gamepads. There's no word yet about a release date or pricing. And there's a list of leaked games, but it's not concrete. But still, if there's a list, let's have a look at it. Forgive me for a bit of repetition, but here they go. There's King of the Fighters 95, King of the Fighters 97, King of the Fighters 98, King of the Ta Fighters 2000, King of the Fighters 2002, Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury Special, Real Bout Fatal Fury, Garou Mark of the Wolves, Samurai Showdown 2, Samurai Showdown 4, Samurai Showdown 5 Special, The Last Blade 2, World Heroes Perfect, Kitsuna Encounter, Metal Slug, 
Metal Slug 2, Metal Slug 3, King of the Monsters 2, Shock Troopers Second Squad, Sengoku 3, Ninja Masters, Top Players Golf, Super Sidekicks, Blazing Star, Puzzled, Metal Slug X, Metal Slug 4, Metal Slug 5, Magician Lord, King of the Monsters, Blue's Journey, Shock Troopers, Rebel Army, Crossed Swords, Mutation Nation, Three Count Bow, Last Resort, Ghost Pilots and Football Frenzy. Now 40 games actually sounds pretty good because when you think about it, the NES Mini only had 30 games and the SNES Mini had, is it 21, 22? Also, if you think about it, the average size of a SNES game is 32 megabytes. Oh, okay, that's, so that's not the average size, but the the largest usual size of a SNES game is 32 megabytes. There's 8 megabyte ones, 4 megabyte ones, 16, etc. Neo Geo games are a lot bigger than that. They can be like 300 megabytes easy. So... There's got to be some serious room on this machine. But again, depending how they've built it, that might mean there's not much room for this to end up being hacked or flashed. Because, you know, just thinking about the price of storage space, the size of it, they might stick to a, a closer, tighter number. I do think there's a bit of repetition here. I don't personally think you need five different King of the Fighters. There's also the fact that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... Oof. Let's just say pretty much a good half of it is fighting games. Which might be reflective of the Neo Geo itself. But how good or bad that is will depend upon your take on that kind of game. And there is a lot of repetition because, don't get me wrong, I love Metal Slug. But having six different Metal Slugs, again, you know, you imagine you don't like that side-scrolling shooter. Then that's six games that don't appeal to you. I personally would have rather have seen Art of Fighting 2 or 3 instead of the first one. Or in place of a couple of King of Fighters. Puzzle Bobble would have been nice, but clearly there's licenses with that. I also would have liked World League Bowling or Baseball 2020, because while those games have a warm place in my heart, I actually owned an AES for a very short period of time. And Baseball 2020 was one of five games I had for it. I guess it's hard to rate this machine at the moment, because we don't know the price. You can look at other things and guesstimate a price. You know, I know some people are going to be wanting it to be in the 60 to £80 pounds price range that a mini SNES, NES kind of are. I don't see that myself with the screen. You know, I think bare minimum it's going to be 100 quid. I, I could be totally proved wrong here. I also... You know, even, even at £100, I think it's arguably good. Because a lot of the time when these games end up on download systems, we're talking 650 for them. So, you know, 650 times 40 is... You know, a heck of a lot more than 100 But then the Neo Geo X, to my memory, was more £200. Um, it's hard to know what they're going to charge for this. I guess we just have to wait and see. There is a SNK collection coming out on the Switch, which some people seem to think would be a collection of Neo Geo games. But apparently it's not. It's SNK pre-Neo Geo games. And it's to celebrate their 40th anniversary. There's Alpha Mission, Athena, Crystallis, Ikea, Warriors 1, 2, and 3, Guerrilla War, Pow, Prehistoric Eye, or Psycho Soldier, Street Smart, 
TNK3, Vanguard. So, you know, it's interesting because we've had a lot of the Neo Geo games on various collections on the Wii and PS2 and PSP. We've had an SNK Classics 1 and we've had like Metal Slug anthologies and Fatal Fury anthologies. But, you know, you might want to look into some of them other than this little console. I can't imagine this mini Neo Geo being that comfortable to play on the joystick using the 3.5 inch screen. I know we all used to play these tiny little arcade looking machines, froggers and various things with quite horrible controllers back in the 80s, but things have kind of moved on from there. Um, I, you know, I think I'd either end up playing this on a TV or it's just something that's going to sit on a shelf. I think that's about all I've got to say on it. Uh, time will tell. Might be brilliant, might not be. But at least it's interesting. And at least they're doing something. And, you know, if they had the good sense to stop someone from making an inferior version before, that that kind of puts hopes up for this. But it also kind of makes you wish that Sega would uh, break away from that games and actually make a mini Mega Drive that has the same sort of class as the SNES Mini. But I guess with this whole mini console thing, we'll just have to see where it goes. We might get mini N64s next, or mini PS1s. It's interesting.